All right, so we talk about body positions here. We're gonna give you three things to focus on as you do this. Even if you're by yourself, set your camera up on, against a wall and, and run through so you can watch it in slow motion. First thing is this nice big bowling ball that's sitting on top of Moose's shoulders here. His head weighs about eight or nine pounds. It's at the end of the fulcrum, so where it sits determines what the body does. When Moose drops his chin onto his chest and leans forward, a couple of things happen. We move the center of mass slightly forward, but we also tend to tuck the hips. By the same token, if Moose looks up at the sky, we over-rotate at the hip and we move that center of mass back. So that's a really important thing. We want a nice straight line through the spine all the way to the top of the head. That's an important thing to pay attention to. We watch a lot of sprinters sprint down like this and try to stay low. And the reality is that that chain of power is important. So keep the chin up. contact the ground is hugely important. So where Moose's foot is, if you go in a two point position, so Moose is in two point, right? Where this foot contacts the ground when it touches the ground is really important, but it's important in relation to the hip and the shoulder and the head. So we wanna make sure that when Moose takes off here and drives, go ahead, push. All right, so as Moose takes off and he continues the push and that foot comes through, where that foot lands in relation to the hip is going to determine where my power goes. I don't want my power going through the roof. I want it going to where I'm ultimately trying to get to, which is down the track. So that's a really important thing in terms of posture and positions. The last thing that I'd like to, to focus on is low heel recovery. Ultimately, the fastest way from point A to point B is a straight line. So when the foot comes off the ground, we want to try to pull it all the way through to that position. We don't want to loop that foot up behind the butt and create a much longer airtime. Understand that, that that positioning with an athlete can result in you scooting and dropping like this. We don't want to do that. We want to pull to a position of power. So there's a couple of tools that I like to use to evaluate my athlete. And, and obviously I'm evaluating posture and positions and I'm also evaluating their ability to create speed. So uh, we know that speed is stride length multiplied by stride frequency. Uh, and, and those two things are really important. But ultimately when I take my athlete and I, I watch them on film and slow it down into a, a slow motion film and watch how the body is moving, I wanna make sure that the movement is horizontal. The body is creating movement down the track. I don't want sideways or uh, vertical movement. I want the power going where I want to go. So that's the very first tool. I'm taking that athlete and I'm saying, okay, the knee drive is moving me where? Is it moving horizontally? Is it moving uh, vertically? Um, where am I going? 
What are the hands doing? We know that the body uses the hands to balance, but it also uses the hands for power. And oftentimes athletes will zigzag down the track because the hands are moving side to side. So I'm making sure that I'm not only watching the athlete from the side, but I'm also watching them from the front. Those tools, those things that I'm looking for are constants. They're not just when the athlete's running full speed. They're in drills. They're in warm-ups. Uh, they're even when we're doing extensive tempo or intensive tempo. I want to make sure that the athlete is moving as efficiently as possible.